Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. Today is the release day of my brand new Spinosaurus model kit that I designed and sculpted. In this video I'll show you all the pieces, how to assemble them and how to paint the model. This model in particular is the third release from my model kit series. So far we have released the male and the female Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can see, this model is comprised of eight different pieces and I'll show you how to assemble them right now. We'll start with the sail and it fits right on top of the body piece like that. So all I'm doing is I'm applying some high viscosity super glue on the contact surface of the sail and then spraying some activator on the other piece and then firmly holding them together. So for the next step, we'll be doing the tail after having applied some super glue on the contact surface and sprayed some activator on the other piece, I held the pieces together firmly. Make sure you don't rush this part. You always want to make sure your pieces are firmly glued before moving to the next one. As you can see, I'm doing the same thing with the head. I'm applying the glue on the neck and then on the joint right there and holding them together, making sure everything is aligned properly. There's no going back. I gave it a last spray with activator just to make sure everything was solidly glued. Next come the legs. As you can see, the split is right there under the knee. So all you have to do is grab the correct leg piece, making sure that the dew claw is always facing the inside. And you do this obviously for both legs. I always like to give everything an extra spray just to make sure it's glued properly. Next come the arms. I did put a bit too much glue on the arm and it kind of seeped out a bit from the seam. So I just grabbed some cloth and dabbed it a little bit. And lastly, I glued the left arm on. Next, our good old friend Milliput will help us out loads. It is quite normal to get seam lines in model kits. All we have to do is just fill in those seams and Milliput is perfect for that. You grab both parts and mix them thoroughly together. We won't be needing much, so I just grabbed a tiny bit of each piece and mix them in really well until they're uniformly colored. Once the parts are mixed together, it will start a chemical reaction where the putty will start to harden. It usually takes about an hour to complete the hardening process. So we have that window of time to work with. I rolled up a little snake of milliput and pushed it into the seam. Then using some tools, I pressed them in even more like the back of a paintbrush. But we'll be using the front of the paintbrush too with some water to smooth it all out. And we'll repeat all of this for every single seam. I forgot to mention that this figure is in roughly 1 18th scale. The same scale as the Mattel Jurassic World figures. And this Spinosaurus as well as those T-Rexes will match up very nicely with the human figures. But enough rambling now, I'll catch you later at the painting stage. There we go, the filling is complete. And this is the final model, all assembled and ready to paint. I want to make my Spinosaurus look just like the one in the film. So I used the Jurassic Park Dinosaur Style Guide that is available for free for everyone. It's an online document that will help tremendously for reference. Grab your paint brushes and your favorite acrylic paints, grab some water too to dilute the paint and let's start painting. Using the style guide as reference, I mixed in this kind of weird purpley color. I've had a lot of questions as to what color paints I use. I just start with primary colors and mix my own. So I'm sorry, I can't really help you there. The guide has hex codes for the colors so you can find the closest match online. After the base coat is dry, I added some very, very faint 
shades of color like this blue and then I'll add some green and oranges too. It might not look as subtle now but once we add more layers it will dull down quite a bit. It just adds a bit more extra color and makes everything look a bit more organic. I'm still using the style guide as reference I'm just sort of translating what I see from the guide onto the figure. And yes, those colors are present on the dinosaur, they're just very, very hard to see. Next, I did some dry brushing with a beige to sort of blend in everything. Not only it dulls down those colors a tiny bit, but it also makes those scales pop. We're applying this color pretty much throughout the whole top half of this figure. Then I'm dry brushing some very light grey over the bottom part of this figure. So on the belly, the neck and the underside of the tail too. And I'm kind of blending it in a bit on the inside part of the limbs. Next is that very nice dark red that we can see throughout the whole dinosaur, but in very specific areas, like on the tip of the tail, slowly fading over the top of the sail, over the top of the neck, and on the snout. For the jaw, I used that same purple that we used earlier and slowly faded it out to that red towards the tip of the jaw. Next, I moved on to the sail and painted in that nice bright blue. I mixed in some primary blue with some white. I grabbed a paintbrush with just water to sort of blend in the two colors on the sail, the red and the blue. Then I did all the patterns. I just used some white, straight up white, and painted in the patterns, copying what I saw from the style guide. It might not look as neat and tidy, it has to look quite organic, and it does kind of look a bit messy here, but then we'll go and fix it in later with some extra colors. Here we go. I mixed in some dark blue and I'm applying it around the edges of the white patterns. That helps neaten everything up and adds a little bit extra contrast. Oddly enough, this Spinosaurus has some orange highlights on the sail too. So I added that, dry brushing some orange specifically on the patterns that are closer to the top part of the sail that kind of blends into that red. It's a very weird design choice and colors, but it looks really good, I think. Next, we use the white again. We're gonna be doing some patterns, but not on the sail this time. We're just doing it on the rest of the figure. So on the head first, and then we'll be moving down to the neck and the torso. There are some patterns on the bottom jaw too, but they're very faint. I'm gonna be using my finger to sort of dab the color away a bit and blend it into the rest. So once we've done the white patterns on the head, I used some dark blue as an outline, just like what we did on the sail. I'm also adding a bit of freckleage going on <laughs> on the white parts too. And by that, I mean, I'm just coloring in some scales that are on the face. I used that same dark blue color to fill in the eye socket. And then I dry brushed a little bit of that orange onto the snout too. That helps blend in the white into that red. I also dry brushed the faintest amount of green on the face too. A bit on the bottom jaw and the tiniest little bit on the cheek. Next, I continued that white pattern down from the neck to the torso and a bit on the leg too. 
making sure the white goes right deep into the cracks and I'm following the style guide as closely as I can. Making some of the white go through the cracks in the scales, connecting into the white patterns of the sail. I've also added some light striping onto the thigh and the back of the thigh too. I've added some of that dark blue outline on this white pattern too, but definitely not as strongly as earlier. But I'm only fading it about halfway through. I did a big black wash over the whole thing. This brings out all of the nice sculpting detail throughout the whole figure. I added a wash inside the mouth too, but this time with dark red. I added an orange and red pink like wash on the underside of the toes and on the hands. I dry brushed a bit more of the figure too with some nice beige. Well technically it's a bit more of a grey but it has the tiniest little hint of yellow in it. Then I painted the claws black. I used a nice bright green for the eyes. some yellowy off-white for the teeth I used some black to paint the outline of the eyes and then the pupil Once the claws are completely dry, I dry brush them with some grey Then I sprayed the whole figure with some matte lacquer or sealant and then I glossed all of the claws and the teeth and the eyes as well as the nostrils too Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the finished Marco Makes Spinosaurus model kit, all assembled and painted. I absolutely love how it came out. I gotta admit though that the Spinosaurus is one of the hardest dinosaurs to paint, especially this Jurassic Park 3 inspired version, as it is a very weird mix of colours. It's got purples, and browns and greys and it's very tough getting the correct tone and correct shading of them. I for one would love to see other artists paint this and see how it comes out. Also in different styles too, maybe based on Kenner ones or some other ones too. In fact I think Bradley, also known as Jurassic, great name by the way, <laughs> my good friend, he is painting his like slice the Lost World Kenner version of the Spinosaurus and I can't wait to see it. He's probably going to publish it on his YouTube channel very very soon so keep an eye out for that. Here are all three model kits so far, let me know which one you'd love to see next. Thank you so very much for watching, grab yours today. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials and most of all you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps. 
you like my videos, please press the like button. And you could uh, consider subscribing. It's free. Oh, and don't forget to press the notification bell button because you don't want to miss any of my new stuff, right? I'm going to say bye now because when you got to go, you got to go. I will see you in the next one.